Hello, and welcome to the Church Revitalization Podcast, brought to you by the Malfers Group team, where each week we tackle important, actionable topics to help churches thrive. And now, here's your hosts, Scott Ball and AJ Matthew. Hi there, and welcome back to the Church Revitalization Podcast. This week is episode 50, and we're talking about decluttering our ministry garage. This is such a fun analogy, Scott. I actually like, I like talking through, through this with churches um, because it actually just fits so well. But the overall theme today is in the, in the realm of discipleship and organizing our ministries in the church. And uh, coming off last week when we talked about foundations of a healthy church, we roll right into this. And when we do our strategic envisioning process, this is what comes next after mission and values is into discipleship. We're going to kind of unpack our analogy for you today. And I think you'll kind of enjoy it, be able to relate to it. Mm -hmm. Um, So uh, let's jump in now, Scott, I do have to ask you though about your own garage. I feel like last week, I feel like every episode now is just Scott being vulnerable, (laughs) opening up about his flaws, the things that he's good at, not good at. I have talked about my own emotional intelligence on this podcast. <laughs> I've talked about how I'm not handy, how I don't like to be outside. Um, yeah. And now we're going to talk about my garage. Thanks, AJ. Thanks for letting I me be your little say, pin Garage has always been a pet peeve for me. I've always, well, look, your automobile is your second largest asset, your most valuable asset, right? Uh, yeah. And, and I don't understand the people I'm turning off like half our audience right now, people that yeah. your garage is full of stuff. You can't park your second most valuable asset, depreciating asset, unfortunately. Um, it's out, you know, getting hammered by the wind and the rain. Um, yeah. And so okay. I've always had a pet peeve about that. My cars always fit. Let's, you know, pump the brakes a minute. <laughs> let <laughs> me say it up now. Let me say that 9.8 days out of 10, my both my cars are in the garage. I, I would even say higher than that. Like wow. it is okay. It is a rare occurrence that both of our cars cannot be in, in the garage. But at this very moment, I can't. And the reason okay. is we've gotten like like we just put put together some new patio furniture. Mm-hmm. So all that that came in a massive box, like probably four feet by four feet. It's huge. And my kids wanted to turn it into a pretend car. So yeah. we've kind of okay. like you gotta get. You gotta give me a little bit of grace. All right, all right. Like it's, it's got it's got boxes. As well. And then like we're trying to get ready for remote school. Anybody else having to deal with that nightmare right now? So I had to get a desk for my my daughter because she uh-huh. didn't have one. So we, I have the I have the box from the desk and the box from her chair. Like I've got I got some grace here. I've got I've got where my car one of my cars parks is filled with empty boxes of things that I've recently assembled, which we covered last week is a real challenge for me. You so, don't want to end up with a possum living in one of those boxes, Scott. <laughs> Let's not go there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Man, we've really gone downhill. Um, and this, but yeah, the point is my garage is currently messy. So let's, when we talk about the ministry garage, the ministry garage clutters up the same way that my own garage has and that any garage does if it doesn't get AJ level attention of detail on a regular <laughs> basis. Um, you have accumulated the ministries that you have, not recently, mm-hmm. but over the course of years or decades. And this is something I often share with pastors is you're continuing the yes that was given by some other pastor a mm. long time ago. That's a great way of saying that. Yeah. So it, you weren't the one who signed off on this ministry, but you're continuing to sign off on it. Yeah. You might have been, but yeah. Yeah, you might have been. <laughs> and so you've, over time, things have cluttered up. So we're really good at adding new ministries in churches, and we're really terrible at taking them away. Um, and this is something that churches have really struggled with. I mean, we've all been forced to basically not use the garage right now um, during the pandemic, but there's an expectation when things begin to reopen over time and be, go back to normal there, you got folks in your church, AJ, who are expecting things to go back to normal and all the things that are in the garage, they're expecting them to still be there. But now is actually a really good time to declutter that garage for real. Yeah. Um, not out of necessity, but out of opportunity. Mm-hmm. And um, so 
I think let's just keep with the garage metaphor and, and use that to apply to our ministry. So if we want to clean up our ministry garage, there's a four step process. Is that right? Yep. Four steps. So first thing, take us, yeah, take us through the first one. Yeah. The first thing that we need to do is get everything out of the garage. So, Wait, so you can't just go through and just find the things you don't like in the garage and get rid of them that way. No, or remember, I don't know if you, if this is, maybe this is an older thing that you wouldn't be aware of this. And it always makes me think like the other way of doing it is we used to, when I was a little kid, we would every now and then you get like a little prize or something and it's this little square and it has a bunch of little squares that can slide around and there's one. They missing. still make these. You're just, your kids are older and you don't okay. realize this, but they so still. So there's one opening and you have to shuffle everything around until you finally get it right. Uh -huh. That's not the way to clean out your garage where you're just shuffling. You have that one square left in your garage and you keep shuffling everything around it until you get the right pattern. Right. That's not the way to clean out your garage. Get it out. Get it out into the, in the analogy, the ministry driveway. You so might have some dead possums. <laughs> just might. I don't, ha I don't have a dead possum. I just want to clarify that. I have sure an we'll alive one. Where that would be. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've never, to my knowledge had a dead possum in my garage. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got to get everything out. Why do you yeah, need yeah, to get yeah. everything out? Well, you've got to get back down to, if you want to bring us back into last week, it backed into the foundation, right? Let's make sure that we can see the bones. Let's get, get down to the bare walls so that um, we can begin to then establish um, what, what needs to come back in, but where is it going to go? How's it going to fit? Uh, I have a question kind of about that. Let me, yeah. let me push you on that a little bit. So when we say everything, what if there's something we know we're going to keep in the garage, something like a worship service, mm -hmm. like, you know, that's going to go back in the garage. Yeah. You pull it out, even though you know, it's going to go back in, pull it out, pull it out and talk about it. When we're going through our process, it's always with um, a core leadership team and it helps to pull that out and talk about it. Have that discussion. What, what is our, what is this ministry all about? What does it, what does it accomplish? What are the goals of it? What are, what's the fruit of it? Um, how does it fit in with what our mission and our values are? Yes, yeah. everything needs to come out because that's where our discussion happens and that's where our strategy begins to build. We're going to look at every ministry individually and um, this can be accomplished in a weekend. You don't, it doesn't take two years to do this. Um, if, you, if you have uh, somebody that gives you a process and a plan to, to manage this process, but you know, um, I don't know, like church revitalization university.com. That would probably work. That would probably work. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe some of your friendly Malford group consultants could help you with it, but that's right. Um, so yeah, Scott, take even the worship service comes out and we're going to have a discussion about it amongst our team. Yeah. Okay. So we pull everything out of the garage, just like you would, you know, everything, everything, no sacred cows, everything has to come out and it really does help. It actually, I don't know. I think if you pull everything out, it actually helps you because it's, it's, um, you're not giving preference to some, to one ministry or another. If you go, well, we're even pull, we're even going to evaluate the worship service. Mm -hmm. Then if you're even going to pull that out, then, then that kind of gives you permission to pull the other things out that might ha carry some emotional weight. Right. All right. So what's the second step? So first step is we've got to sort of pull everything out. And again, we kind of lay out how, what, what does pull everything out look like? Uh, we kind of lay that out in our process. We don't want to get too far into the weeds, but essentially you have to metaphorically put everything on the table. Okay. So mm -hmm. what's number two? Yeah. Number two is once we have sort of a clean slate, now we're going to build a system in which we're going to put things back in. So carrying through the, the whole garage thing, um, you've got, you know, every rake and shovel and probably even a couple that you're like, I didn't know we had two of these rakes. Yeah. Um, and so we've, we've need to install some shelves now, some, some hooks and hangers and, and uh, cabinets, all the things that are going to house our ministries. We've got to have this framework, if you will, for what we're going to put back and make the space where we can easily access those things. If somebody needs something, where can, where can we get it? Right here. If somebody needs fellowship, here it, it's right here. We can get you there easily because everything is orderly. Um, does somebody need um, Bible study and need to have deeper knowledge of God's word? Right here. It's hanging right here for you. Um, so this is, this is why we've got to have a system then for putting things back in in an orderly and easily accessible way. I think it also can show you what's missing. So once everything's pulled out and you have a new system, you know, it's not just about kind of identifying the handful of things 
you want to keep. It's also about identifying things that you might need. Yeah. Um, you know, this is maybe tough at, within the metaphor, but you might realize, you know, um, I don't have this tool or I don't have this thing that I'm going to need. You know, mm-hmm. when, when winter comes, I don't have a snow shovel or whatever. Like once you start to clear things out, you realize what you, what you have, what you're, what you're going to keep and, and what you, what you're going to need. So the system itself was something we'd call a discipleship pathway. That's not terminology that we invented. And it's something you've probably heard of. <clears throat> Certainly something we've talked about, but that's sort of the shelving. The organizational system is the discipleship pathway. But in terms of understanding that you have to realize you really need parallel pathways now post COVID <clears throat> in thinking something in person, physical and something digital. It's not going away, AJ. I really don't think, I think that this is a new era mm. for church where there's going to be a need for both moving forward. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah. Yeah. No doubt about it. Um, we're going to, we're going to see that definitely, I mean, into the next six months, year. Um, but I think we're going to find that it's valuable and that it's fruit producing to do right. as well. And so I think it'll, it'll be worth your effort to be able to maintain that. And they're always going to be very closely related you know, slightly different execution, probably led by, um, you know, similar teams and everything. But yeah, I don't think we're, online's not going away. No, it's not. And and it's going to got to push you to thinking, you have to hold online. This is maybe my pushback on online church, is that you have to hold online church to the same standard that you hold in-person church. So, you know, if 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 we're doing a really poor job, say, at engaging guests and newcomers in 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 person worship services um but then and then we improve that but then when it comes to our online services we're really not good at identifying guests and newcomers in our online services we can't go be like oh well it's online so it doesn't really matter like Mm -hmm. no it it matters like it really matters and so you have to hold your virtual groups that's another thing that we've seen really slack is people go well it's just zoom it's just for now Mm -hmm. like i think the virtual group things to some degree is going to exist in some form or fashion long term yeah. you have to hold it to the same standard that you would an in-person small group before we continue with the episode i want to give you a brutal fact five years from now your church is going to look vastly different than it does today here's the truth you can either be a victim of change or have a voice in it we believe your church deserves the tools and resources to shape your future for the better and you shouldn't have to have a big budget to afford them churchrevitalizationuniversity.com delivers Dr. Aubrey Malfer's strategic envisioning process to your church in a fully digital format so you can reduce your stress, grow your church, and change your world. You'll save thousands of dollars over the cost of traditional church consulting while preparing your church to thrive in this post-COVID world. And you can sign up today for a free preview account. So get access to the full introduction module plus previews of the entire process so you can be sure that it's a good fit for you and your church kick the tires on it a little bit no credit card required for that no obligation whatsoever but you'll want to get that free account soon because early bird pricing which saves you 250 dollars only lasts until august 18th so visit church revitalizationuniversity.com to get a free preview account today church revitalizationuniversity.com Okay, yeah. so first we pulled everything out of the garage. We've bought our new shelving, our new system. We've de- created our discipleship pathway. We know the framework for how we're going to make and mature disciples at our church. So then what's next? Yeah. Let me interject in here as well, the connection between, especially if you listened last week, that our values, what we value, is going to help us create our framework. Sure. Our discipleship pathway is motivated, and we use the, the question, what motivates us? What motivates us is what will build out our discipleship pathway so that our ministries all make sense and that we end up achieving our goals. So, yeah. Yeah, so, the, so the, 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 those, those values act as like, what are the outcomes we want to see? Yeah. And then the discipleship pathways, how do we produce those outcomes? Right. What is the manner th- through which the strategy, the system through which we produce these outcomes? Exactly which is still is a, is a good tie in now for number three. And that's what gets put back in. Um, what, how are we going to take what we've got in our ministry driveway 
and fit it now back in on our new system of, you know, shelves and hooks and cabinets um, for how we're helping people um, to mature in the faith and, um, and, you know, go and make disciples. Yeah. So, um, you know, this is not, um, this is not something that we need to just say, well, we've got all this stuff and now let's cram it back in here. Um, this is again, that discussion, you know, I mean, you asked, should we take worship service out and talk about it? Yeah, we should. Um, the, the discussion is happening when it goes back in, not on the way out, just get it all out. And the discussion happens now. Okay. We've got a framework. Where does this fit? How well does it fit? And you mentioned maybe finding gaps. I mean, we might end up with a, a cabinet over here with the label evangelism on it. We open it up and there's nothing inside. Right. Uh, we've, you know, we've got, we need to create something for that. Um, but we might also find, um, wow, we've got, you know, we've got four hooks over here for, um, for Bible study or, you know, God's word. Um, but we've got eight of them in the driveway. Uh, and we, so what, maybe yeah, what's going on the hooks? Yeah, yeah, we've <laughs> we've only got four hooks. So what do we do with that? Maybe we had never taken the time to and really did that did that assessment or that audit. Like, wow, we've got an awful lot. We're very heavy here. Um, yeah. Is it all necessary? And and what's going to go back in? I have four hammers. <laughs> you Scott have four hammers. Yeah. Uh, it's a long story how I have that many and it wasn't just like me every time I needed to nail something I was like I gotta go buy a hammer um, although I think at least one of them is is uh, one that I bought because I thought I didn't have a hammer and I had three others so um, I mentioned that because I think as goofy and ridiculous as that sounds churches do this exact same thing they go gosh we really need to build community mm. so they just buy another hammer mm. And then, yeah. but they didn't get rid of any of the other ones. There was, no, and there was not necessarily anything wrong with them. And instead of trying to like actually learn how to use the one hammer they have, they just buy new hammers. And they, um, a new hammer does not fix your ability to. I'm, I'm now I'm really stretching the metaphor, but like churches make the assumption that if we were to have a new program, the outcome would somehow be different. When the reality mm-hmm. is that you just don't know how to use the programs you have. Yeah. You don't need a new one. You know, mm-hmm. you need to learn how to use the ones you have. Yeah. If you need to drive a nail, but you're using the claw side, not, right. the, yeah. not the hammer side. <laughs> That's right. No matter how many hammers you buy, you're still doing it the wrong way. Why is that nail not going down? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it's the same thing, you know, like, well, we got to try this groups thing. We got to do this. Or when it comes to fellowship, we got to have this event. We got to this. And like, no, no, you don't need more. You need better. You Mm -hmm. just need to know how to do that. So again, not trying to explicitly sell something here, but these are the things we talk about in the training, like what makes uh, an outreach strategy, something that works, what makes a discipleship, you know, community life program, something that works. You know, you have to understand how to use these things in conjunction with one another and what a healthy thing looks like. And then you can evaluate what needs to go back on the hooks or the shelves. Yeah. Yep. Very good. Uh, right, well, and then finally, leads, Scott, number four. Yeah. The, uh, the, the, it's, it's the step that no one wants to deal with. <laughs> yeah. is- number four is you got to deal with what's left in the driveway. And so if you're doing things right, you don't cram everything back in and uh, just make it all fit. That's yep. the easy way out. And and a lot of half-hearted efforts take place in churches all the time, kind of doing this like, yeah, we looked at everything and we think it's all, we think it's pretty good. Yep. Um, It's probably not. um, And you got to deal with what's in the driveway. And this is, it's all fun and games, really. It's an enjoyable process until you get to that part. And then all of a sudden your team is looking around the room like, "Um, okay, men's and women's Bible study is still over here. Yep. Um, and we've got Sunday school and we've got midweek small groups that are, you know, following the sermon notes and why, what do we do with these? Um, because, you know, Janet's been an awesome ministry director forever. And, you know, Jared, um, is, is just, you know, really great. All the guys really love him. Um, it's a fictional scenario, but it might be your exact one or something else like it that is just as meaningful to, a small group of people or a large group of people. Yeah. Um, but we've got to evaluate these things and just ask the tough questions. Um, you know, we've got limited resources in the church, mm-hmm. right? We've got limited financial resources. We've got limited 
physical resources in our, in our facilities. We've got limited human resources in time and capacity. And, and attention. It matters. Yeah, attention's a you big You only get so much of people's attention. That's right. And one of the things that you know, I say to churches I'm working with a lot is that given the choice between something spiritually healthy and spiritual junk food, mm. most people will pick the spiritual junk food mm. every time. And so when you, now, now I'm morphing metaphors into pantries, but you know, if, if you stock the pantry full of junk food, that's what the folks are going to go for. And, and a lot of what we do in church is spiritual junk food. It's something that makes us feel like we're doing something, but no actual progress is happening. And um, I would say this is maybe the key difference between going through a process on your own, like a self-guided church revitalization university or working with a guide is that, you know, when you're working with a guide, um, again, I'm really make this probably sounds like I'm just trying to sell something. I'm really not. I just want you to understand when, when you have someone who comes in who doesn't have, you know, a dog in the fight, so to speak, you, I don't really care about your feelings. I want, I want you to, I mean, I do care about your feelings, but I, I want to see a good outcome. Mm -hmm. So I'm willing to push you further than you might push yourself. Um, cause I'll look at your, you know, we could, we have tools that we use in charts and I'll look at the chart and I'll go, what's actually different. You just slapped a different name on something, but you didn't change anything. And you know, what are the odds that you're going to be willing to stand up? Hopefully you would, or that people would respect it. So sometimes it's helpful to have someone from the outside kind of go, hold on, this, this doesn't look like you've actually changed anything. You're just doing the same thing with a different name on it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that won't work. You, it's like you said, AJ, if you're trying to cram everything back into the garage, you're, you're, you're where you were before with new shelves. Um, and that's not necessarily better. Yeah, that's right. Maximize your time, maximize your resources, go for the greatest output that you can get out of what you do. So let me just, I mean, we, we, I don't want to get too, again, too far into the weeds on how we deal with this, but just for the sake of clarity, does this mean we're actually going to have to sunset certain things that certain ministries have to for real go away? Yeah, it does. It does. Um, some things will fit. Some things will change. Some things uh, will either now or later go away. Yeah. That's tough. I think yeah, probably some people listening are going, you don't know my church. Yeah. Yeah. You had me uh, up until there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I get it, but, um, that, yeah, that what brings are you, you beholden to? Are you, I mean, right. that kind of goes back to those motivations. Are, mm -hmm. If I'm beholding, beholden to people's expectations of me and how they feel, then, then this process wasn't going to work. Yeah. But if your motivations are discipleship, mm -hmm. um, then you can't not deal with the stuff in the driveway. Right. Yep. Yeah. What are we here for? That's right. Yeah. You go through this process, like it's not like doom and gloom and everyone's angry at you. Like you come <laughs> out the other end of this thing and you have a garage that works. Yeah. Right. right. Like it's a hard process, but there's benefit on the back end. And, yeah. and yes, you're, there are some folks who are going to be angry at first, but the, the backside of that is, is all the upside and potential. It's not like you go through this hard thing and then everybody's mad and the church closes. The yeah. whole reason you did it is so that it, you could have a, an effective ministry again. And that's, that's the end result. The end result is not people being angry. The end result is, <laughs> is, uh, is, is growth and fruit. Right. An effective church. Yeah. And, and, and there's, there's healthy and good ways of, of, sunsetting ministries and there's, you know, ineffective and wrecking ball ways of doing it. Right. Um, and so we're certainly going to help you uh, do the former and not the latter. Uh, but it's, Hey, it's necessary. And uh, nobody said this was easy, right? Um, so you've been listening to episode 50 of the church revitalization podcast on decluttering your ministry garage. Uh, thanks again, Scott, very much. You can get today's show notes at malfersgroup.com slash 50, just the number five zero, uh, where you'll also be able to catch the, uh, the replay of this on audio and video alike. And in addition to that, I also want to remind you about what you heard about at the beginning of the episode, and that is our post-COVID church checklist of 10 key items um, of a healthy church that you're definitely going to want to get. And that's available at malfirstgroup.com slash post-COVID, just all one word, P-O-S-T-C-O-V-I-D.
there's a fun little goodie at the end of that um, checklist. There's a link to sign up for a free preview account, at Church Revitalization University. So if you're listening to this episode and you're going, man, this sounds like something I need to do, um, you probably do. You probably do. Um, uh, sorry, I know we're wrapping this up, but just anecdotally, I was working with a, a church recently that is a larger church, AJ. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, all outward signs you'd think they had it all together. Like I think most people who are listening to this podcast would scroll their website and go, man, they've really got their stuff together. I um, mean, in a lot of ways they do. They really have a lot of positive things going for them. But we went through this process, this exact process, AJ, of decluttering their ministry garage. And um, the pastor came up to me afterward and he said, man, I don't know what we were doing. <laughs> it was like we were walking through a dark room uh, just trying to fumble our way around this brought so much clarity to what we need to do next and they are i mean they are going after it like i'm so proud of them they're like they're implementing and they're making the hard decisions and they're doing it um and so i just want you to know like every church can benefit from this process even if you think you've got a lot going for you and you probably do the process of decluttering your garage. I bet even AJ could stand to clean out his garage every now and again, even though he stays on top Every of now it. and then I do. Yes, That's indeed. Right. <laughs> so um, check it out. Uh, get Go to malfrisgroup.com forward slash post COVID. Get the checklist. And at the end of it, there's a link to sign up for a free preview account. Find out if Church Revitalization University is, is, is a fit for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and if it is, then it'd be a great opportunity for you to declutter your ministry garage on top of all of the other things that we also handle in the process. There you go. Thanks for joining us. We sure appreciate having you. God bless you and your ministry. And we'll be back with you again next week. See ya.